Hi fellow crafters, this is Christina, owner of Maple and Sunshine Boutique. I just wanted to do a quick tutorial tonight on these super cool zippered boxed cushion covers. Um, I really wanted to make some new cushions for our patio furniture and I looked online, I couldn't find any tutorials or patterns or anything for exactly what I wanted. Um, what I love about the way that I've done these is that I have a zipper on one side, but the nice thing about the zipper is that it goes all the way down one side and a couple inches down another side. So it's a little bit on this side, all the way down this side, and then on the other side I have a couple inches too. Um, that way it's really easy to put these covers off and on, and it's one piece of fabric. So you basically cut your one piece, add your zipper, box your corners, and it's a done deal. And I'll show you how to do it. All right, so the first thing you want to do is actually calculate what measurements you're going to need for your fabric. If you want to do this way of making the boxed zippered cushion covers, what I did was take my total width and height. So this is a 22 inch cushion and it's five inches deep. What you're going to want to do is double the width, add one side, and then on the other side, you're gonna to wanna to add half and half. So basically you're adding each side twice. So double this 44, because it's 22 and 22, and then on the sides, five and five. And then you're gonna to wanna to add one inch on top of that because I'm using a half inch seam allowance. And then what I've done in addition, you can use just regular foam batting. I just happened to have this quilting batting laying around. It was already here. Take some glue, spray glue adhesive and spray a light mist on top of it and just adhere your batting to the top. It's gonna to give it just a fuller, smoother overall look. As you can see, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're not gonna see the edges here unless you're using a really thin fabric for your cushion cover or a really thick batting that's gonna stand out a lot. This fabric is from Joanne. It's, I wanna say, Solarium. I'll double check that. And the zippers are also from Joanne. This is my single piece of fabric. Again, my cushion is 22 by 22 square and five inches deep. And it's all out of one cut of fabric. So this way, width-wise, it is 22 plus the sides and you're going halfway on each side so 22 plus 5 inches deep plus another inch for your seam allowance because I'm doing a half inch seam allowance so I have a total of 28 inches this way and then lengthwise I have 22 22 5 5 plus another inch for seam allowance and then at each corner you'll see what I did here since it's going to be boxed corners you're going to take, depending on the depth of your cushion, since I'm doing a five inch deep cushion, I did two and a half and two and a half, and I'm going to be doing a half inch seam allowance there as well. So when I box this and it meets up with the other side, you're going to have your five inch cushion depth. Okay, so I'm here at my machine. I have my fabric I just showed you with all of the corners cut, half the, depth of my total cushion depth so that when the two meet up you're going to have your total depth and I'm just going to sew these at a half inch seam allowance. Here we go. And you want to back, back stitch at your start and stop just since these are going to be getting a lot of traffic and a little heavier duty. I am using outdoor upholstery thread so that it will last outside in the heat and humidity. Two. 
there are your four boxed corners, which is technically going to make two of your corners. We'll do the other two later, but you can see how nice that is. It's a nice square, square corner, and that will meet up, and I'll show you how to do the zipper at this point. Okay, so this is the zipper that I purchased. I got this from Joanne. It's a sport zipper. It is a separating zipper, which I didn't mean to get, but it still works, which means it's the type of zipper, like at the bottom of your jacket, where you have to put the little tab in and then put the two pieces together. It still works fine for this, but if you can get one without that, that's great. Um, you do want to get a zipper that is longer than the width of your cushion, otherwise you're not gonna have that nice, easy, open corner. The whole reason I wanted to do this was because I wanted the zipper to be the full width of the cushion plus a couple of inches up the sides so that I could open it really easily and be able to get the covers off and on of the cushion without fighting it and it being a pain in the butt. So this is actually a 28 inch zipper, which means that my 22 inch cushion is gonna have three inches of zipper up each side, which I can just put that in the back. It's not a big deal and it looks nice the way we're doing it anyway. Um, what you want to do is get the short end where you have two of your box corners, so the shortest length with your two corners that you just made. We are going to center the zipper face down, so the right side of the zipper is going to be facing the right side of your fabric, and once you have it centered, about even distance off of each corner, you're going to go ahead and pin. I like wonder clips, so I'm just going to go ahead and clip this, and I will be right back. Okay, so here I am. I have my zipper, again, the right side of the zipper is facing the right side of the fabric and I have it spaced evenly between the two corners with a few inches hanging over each end of where the corner is so it goes up the side a few inches. I do have my zipper foot installed so that we can get nice and close right up to the zipper that way you're not having a huge amount of zipper showing on this and what I'm gonna do is unzip my zipper so I can get it started without that big zipper pull in the way. Back stitch at your beginning so that it's nice and tight. Not there, I gotta go over. Okay, here we go. And then just go right down your zipper. This is automatically going to create a half inch seam allowance. You, want, you can go ahead and pull your tab back over to the other side now that we're past it. There we go. I know I didn't put my needle down, but with this zipper, you actually have to raise the needle in order to get the little tab past it, but I realigned it. So just down, there we go. side of the cushion cover. What we are going to do is take the other short side as if you're folding it in half. Let me see if I can get a little better picture here. You have your corner and then the full length and then the other corner on the short end. You're going to put it together. So you're going to put your short side to your short side, right sides together, making sure that you are getting these corners aligned where the seam is, where you did your corner box. You're going to make sure that those corners go right together, push them up so that your seams meet exactly, and then you're going to clip you're going to clip 
your corner to the other side of the zipper so that your zipper you now have this once you open it up the right side of your zipper with the right side of your fabric that you just attached taking the other corner you put the right side of this other side to the right side of the one you just sewed with the seam aligned and clip it to your zipper the other side of the zipper so the right side of the fabric is facing the right side of the zipper I'll clip that and I'll be right back okay I'm back I've got it clipped and at this point you basically have an inside out cushion cover with the side seams open so this is going to be where the zipper is with the back where we've got it clipped and I'm going to sew up where the zipper is on the other side just make sure the side that we sewed first is pulled out of the way so you're pulling it so it's not going to get caught on the other side of the zipper while you're sewing here we already sewed this side and that's where this fabric is attached to and we are going to sew the other side of the fabric to this side of the zipper and we don't want to get the other fabric caught in there it's easy to do Okay. Now that I have the use of my hands, I can show you a little bit better from a wider angle what I was doing. So I sewed it to one side and then I folded it in half and folded the right side to the other side of the zipper. I can open and close the zipper now. What I'm going to do next is pin or clip where the zipper stops. I'm just going to clip that together all the way down the side and sew a half inch seam allowance all the way to the end and then I'll show you the next step from there. I have my side clipped and it's the side from the zipper to the end where it's folded over. I'm going to just go right up that side up all the way to the zipper where it ends with a half inch seam allowance. as I can to the end of the zipper but it's pretty bulky so I'll get as close as I can back stitch take it out of the machine and then what I'm going to do is just go back in here get as close as I can and just do a stitch this way and I'll just do half half an inch in to the edge and I'll just go back and forth a few times and again I'm just going re reinforcing that half inch seam allowance this way so that it gives some more support where the end of the zipper is. Okay, so now I have a completely sewn square. It's big enclosed box basically. And one end with the zipper has boxed corners. The other end that we just sewed the sides up to where it's folded over does not have boxed corners yet. That's the next step. I do just want to mention that when you're sewing up the sides, before you sew up the second side, clip it in place to where the end of the zipper is and then unzip it. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to turn your cover. Make sure it's unzipped at least several inches so you can get your hand in there and unzip it the rest of the way. What you want to do for my cushion, because it is five inches deep, I need to cut out again the two and, a, uh, two and a half inch corner here. However, I have a seam allowance and this half inch seam allowance right here is going to change that a little bit. So what I'm going to be cutting is two and a half inches in this way because of the extra half an inch on the seam allowance. And then I'm going to be cutting just the two inches here. So two and a half on the side with the half inch seam allowance two inches here. So it's going to look like a rectangle, but it's actually a square if you're not counting that half inch seam allowance. I'll go ahead and cut those and show you how to sew it up. Okay, so I have my corners cut out on both sides of the end that has the fabric folded over. Again, I have two inches, two and a half inches, but really this is where the seam allowance is. 
So if you ignore that, it's a two inch by two inch square, which is ultimately going to give me a five inch box corner because of the half inch seam allowance on each side. I'm gonna go ahead and press these side seams open to do the next step, and then I'll show you how to do the box corners and you will be finished. I have my corner and I pressed my seam open. So what I'm going to do is bring this side of the corner to the seam side of the corner, almost as if you're pinching it closed. And this is what you're going to have. It is basically a flat strip and I'm going to pin it just so it stays in place with my seam open. And I'm just going to sew a half inch seam allowance right across here and that's going to make the box corner for the front of my cushion on the opposite side of the zipper. side again just to kind of pinch it closed the opposite direction that it's going it will automatically create your little box yay and here we go um, let's see. half inch seam allowance forward back forward in the home stretch not really because I have several more of these to make, but you're in the home stretch if you're only making one. All right, there we go. Um, this fabric kind of sheds, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of fraying a little bit on the edges. If you have a serger and you want to serge across the ends to cut it down to the quarter inch serger width and tie up some of those loose ends, you can. Honestly, for me, these aren't going to be put on and taken off and put on and taken off. They don't get used very much. I live in Florida, it's too hot to sit outside for any extended period of time, unfortunately. So they're only gonna get used very minimally. They're just gonna sit there and look pretty. But if you think you're gonna be taking them off and on, washing them regularly, it's probably better to finish off the edges so you have as little fraying as possible. Let me flip this right side out and we'll show you the finished product. Yay, we did it, okay. So the beauty of this cover, the reason I wanted to do it this way, A, I used one piece of fabric and it just makes life easier, and B, I had to have a zipper that extends past the width because I hate struggling with these things to put them off and on. The easiest way to put them off and on is to turn it inside out, just like you had it when you finished. Put your hands inside of it right down to the corners and put it on the end of your cushion. Match the corners up with where your corners are on your cushion just to get it started. And you can just flip the edges up. The beauty of that huge wide zipper is that you can just push it right over there. It goes on super easy. As you can see, I'm not cussing, so it's not that frustrating to do. Tuck the end over, tuck the other end over, and it's as easy as that. If you want, you can top stitch on your zipper on the outside. I did on one of mine, I have it on the others. I thought it was just kind of overkill and unnecessary, again, just because I'm not gonna be taking these off and on all the time. Um, but at this point, like I said, I accidentally got one of those zippers that you have to stick the tab in, but it's not a problem. Zip it up, all the way down, and there you have it. It's beautiful, it fits perfectly. I can put it out there and no one will know I made it. Well, everyone will know I made it, but <laughs> people will think it was bought from a store because it looks that good. All right, hope everyone has a good night.